Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of We Need to Talk. Today, I am joined by award-winning NASA rocket scientist, author, TED Talk speaker, and journalist, Miss Olympia LaPointe. Olympia, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Oh, it is my pleasure to be on your show today. Well, you know, I'm always I'm always inspired by hearing people's stories, and that's one of the reasons why I, I started this show. But there's nothing that inspires me more than not only seeing a woman, but a woman of color that is dominating in fields that are mainly run by white males. So I am extremely excited to just talk to you and learn your story and your trajectory and your career path. So let's just go back to the beginning a little bit. How did you know that being a part of scientists science and being a scientist was what you wanted to do and what kind of led you on this path? Oh my gosh, that that is a great question. And uh, it, it brings all of us back to, I think it was 1981. I was six years old and uh, we went to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Mm-hmm. And there it was am- amazing, amazing. I saw uh, these gigantic jet engines and I saw these planes and I remember we went into this field trip and it was in this dark room what we later found out was their mission control room at Jet Propulsion Laboratory and it was a place where the people gathered to launch rockets and I remember looking on the wall and seeing the pictures of the men on the wall and I remember looking at the white men, there were white men on the photos. And I remember thinking to myself, I want to be just like those men. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) That's amazing. You know, it's funny because, you know, when we talk about representation, usually people choose fields where they see themselves, you know, and, and, you know, with acting, with music, with, with anything, pretty much, if you see somebody that looks like you doing something, you're more likely to be gravitating towards that field. So for you, I love that you saw all of these white men and you're like, no, I'm, I'm going to do that. I want to do that. Well, I saw science. I didn't see it being man. I didn't see it being woman. I saw it as an opportunity to use science to do great things. And I thought to myself, I want to use science and do exactly what they're doing. So I saw it as a opportunity to fulfill a life calling, Mm. to create answers and to, to share solutions with people so we can even get to even taller heights than we've never seen before. So when I saw it as six years old, I saw it as I could be a part of science. I could be a part of people who are providing solutions. And, And that's how I looked at it. I didn't look at it as Uh, It being a a male dominated field, I didn't look at it as being a, uh, a, uh, a young woman of color entering something that was going to be challenging. I looked at it as an opportunity Mm -hmm. for me to share what it is that I was eventually going to learn and know. And that's how I still look at it to this day. So now that you're here, you know, do you see the importance of you being in the position that you are in, in terms of representation? It's at, it, yes. And, and this is the reason why I say that. One out of 31,000 African American women or people of color become a rocket scientist. Mm. And so you have a greater chance of being hit by lightning twice <laughs> than going into those types of fields. And it, it isn't. It, it, there's no, I, I don't, I don't believe in there's a uh, chance. I don't actually don't believe in chance. I believe in destiny and mm. I believe some things are going to happen no matter what. And you have the opportunity to choose which direction that you're going to go. Yeah. And for me, one in 31,000 is something that I chose. And, and there's another one in a hundred thousand person out there. There is going to be a, a one in a million person out there doing what it is that they're going to do. And I, my job on this planet is to teach people how to be that one, how to be that one. So then there's going to be more. So there's not going to be one. There's going to be two. Then there's going to be three. Then the next thing, you know, there's no longer going to be that statistic right. because there is an equal playing field. Yeah. That's how I look at it. I think that's beautiful. And I mean, you know, as a woman of color, you're going to be faced with two things. You're you're going to be faced with sexism and you're going to be faced with racism, you know? So how have you managed to combat those isms to get to the success that you've had at this point in your career? 
Oh, that is a brilliant question. Uh, and, and thank you for your question because I really want everyone to hear this. The way that we get over sexism and racism is to change our thinking. It, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said this the best. What drives the, the root cause of what, where anger comes from is fear. Fear is the underlying emotion behind anger. And, and Gandhi said that too. It was the exact same thing because a lot of people don't know Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. studied from Gandhi and Gandhi's teaching. When we address fear and we address the, where the fear has come from, then we are able to remove the anger, remove the racism, remove the sexism, because it all stems from fear. Mm -hmm. When we can actually get to the root of where someone's fear comes from, and then not only remove, go back to that situation where the fear was first introduced, but actually go back to that situation, coach ourselves through that toughest moment and tell ourselves the truth, then we're able to come back into this moment in time and no longer fear the decision that's in front of us, but mm -hmm. actually embrace it. And when we embrace the future and move forward to where we're going, the fear no longer creates the the anger which then creates the the racism and then the the sexism when we go to the root of where it stems from and we tell the truth in that moment in time where that fear was first introduced yeah. it completely changes the future and that is what my latest book is about answers unleashed to the science of attracting what you want. Yeah, let's talk about your book. Was there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew, okay, this is what I need to write about and this is the message that I want to get out into the world? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hear it. We're going to talk about yeah. that. What was that pivotal moment for you? Oh, I, I, I truly believe that we are always learners and we never stop learning. And for me, I knew that everything I learned, I wanted to share. And I just this that's just my makeup ever since like I was a kid. Oh, I learned this. Let me tell you about that. Oh, I learned this. Let me show you what I just learned. Yeah, and yeah. I, here I am, a 44-year-old grown woman. Oh, let me show you what I just learned. <laughs> 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 and and it's each time I learn something new, I write a book. <laughs> and I'll probably be writing books for the rest of my life. And I everybody know me though. as oh, Olympia Laporte, the award-winning author, you know. But it's like everything I learn, I write it down and I share it with people so people can learn it too, so they can actually move forward with that same information. And yeah. uh, the first book, Mathophobia, How You Can Overcome Your Math Fears and Become a Rocket Scientist, was dealing with what I learned as uh, a person who was teaching mathematics as a part-time professor in mm. mathematics. And what I was learning and about how people had to overcome their fear of mathematics so they can move forward in those STEM fields as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics courses. And then the second book, Answers Unleashed, The Science of Unleashing Your Brain's Power, was when I had to go through my own personal journeys in my past and really take a look at the toughest, most traumatic moments in my life that that crippled my ability to be innovative. Mm. When I went back to those moments and actually looked at the trauma that exists and actually worked to reframe my thinking so I could actually in, in, include that chaos in order to unleash innovation, that brought me to my second book. And this book now, Answers Unleashed to the Science of Unleashing Your Brain's Power, Oh, no, no, that, I'm telling you the second book, Answers Unleashed to the Science of Attracting What You Want. I love all my books. They're like my babies. <laughs> they should be. <laughs> hey, writing a book is no small feat, so you should be very proud. Yeah, it's great. So, so this book, Answers Unleashed to the Science of Attracting What You Want, deals with how we make decisions to bring in what we want in mm. our life. Mm. And, and when I found out, oh my God, what I attract is based on what I believe and what I think and what my decisions are. These opportunities have come based on my decision. Yeah. 
And when I realized, huh, it, it's just not me that this is affecting. This is affecting everyone mm -hmm. on the face of the planet. Yeah. Every single person has energy in their decisions and whatever you decide is based on what you're going to attract. I was like, I need to tell this story. I need to yeah. let people know about this news. But how much do you think it's thinking, but also circumstance? Because there are some people that feel that, I mean, there are people who are victims of their own circumstances. So how do you tell them, hey, if you change your thinking, these things can happen for you? Everybody has the opportunity to attract what they want. It's, it's actually a, a gift to be able to do that. And every single one of us has that power, no matter what we've gone through. No matter if your parents have divorced and, and you think that you're not going to be able to be in a good marriage, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you grew up in poverty and you're still trying to pay off your college loans and, and, and late on your bill payments. It, it does not matter because it is your willingness to go back in time check out the toughest moment in time that made you start thinking that you didn't have enough money for something or you weren't eligible for love or whatever that was of something yeah yeah and and talk coaching yourself through it we hire the best coaches to coach ourselves never do we think can we actually go back in time and talk to ourselves and coach ourselves with all the information that we learned from seeing or witnessing um, healthy situations yeah. from witnessing the situations where people have paid off debt. If we can actually go back in time and make that decision to do so, and actually literally just talk to yourself. And, and I realized I had to do that with myself. Uh, I was, uh, nine years old when I saw the challenger explosion. And that was uh, back in 1986, January 28th. And I remember being nine years old and I saw the space shuttle explode in front of all of us and, and millions of people across the entire world saw that and i remember thinking to myself someone should do something so they are going to help the astronauts so people don't die i didn't realize that as a 30 year old person who was sitting in mission control supporting the launch that at 30 years old, I went back to my nine-year-old self and said, you can do this. You're going to be able to sit right over here. Just keep up with your schoolwork. You're going to be able to do this. I literally, in my brain, in my mind, imagine myself going back to myself at nine years old, telling myself I could do it. I am a firm believer anyone has that ability to go back in time and tell yourself the truth so you mm -hmm. can get where you need to go. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. And I love that that's fueled you to help you get your accomplishments and you've stayed in that mindset. That's incredible. So let's talk a little bit about your time with NASA. You know, when did you start with them? You know, how much work have you done with them? I, are you still with them currently? Just, I would love to know about your whole career path Thank with you. your, your experience you. with them. Yeah. I am retired. I, <laughs> I am retired. To, I retired to start my own business. And oh, I'm very you. thankful for that. I started yeah. uh, at the Boeing company originally. And there I was recruited to work on uh, propulsion projects. And my official title was a propulsion scientist. And that's like the fancy word for rocket scientists. And, and that is a fancy word for making sure people stay alive when they're sitting on top of explosions. <laughs> Important job. <laughs> and uh, for me, um, I originally started as a mathematician for the Boeing company. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't originally a rocket scientist, rather I was uh, doing accounting work. And I had all the, the knowledge and the mathematics to be able to go in engineering, but I was actually in accounting at first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People don't know that, but wow. that's where I was. And I saw this man um, down the hall who had a lot of work to do and there wasn't anyone who could help him at the company do the work because it was such a niche type of mathematics that needed mm. to be done. There was no one else that knew the computer system, no one else that knew the mathematics that could help him. So he had piles of paperwork. At the same time, I was going to graduate school, earning my um, advanced degree in mathematics. And there was no one who could help me except him. There was no one at the company who had that knowledge of mathematics. Mm -hmm. So I went to him one day and I asked him to show me uh, if you could show me how to do some of this work that I was doing in my graduate school. And, and he did. And I just felt so 
gracious and, and just so thankful that he showed me how to do the problem. And I looked over at his desk and I asked, well, what are, what's all that on your desk? And he says, oh, that's my work. And I'm like, well, why is there so much? And, and here I was a 21 year old, fresh college graduate at, at the company. And he's, and he simply tells me there's no one to help me here. There's, there's only two of us that know how to do this mathematics. And one of us knows how to use the computers and the other one doesn't. And so there's all this work here and there's no one to help us. And I looked at that as an opportunity. Yeah. I was going to learn so I could help them. And I wasn't going to be paid for it, but mm -hmm. I thought I'm going to learn and I'm going to pick up something new and I'm going to become a master at numbers. And I did something that no sane person does. I offered to help him after my, after my time, was over after I finished my work, offered to help him on his work. And wow. that's how the mentorship started. And he mentored me there. And then I eventually uh, graduated and went to work on advanced propulsion projects. And then I eventually became an official rocket scientist. And then I help um, support mission control in launching the space shuttle main engine. And my the program ended in 2011. Mm -hmm. I retired a couple of years right before that and started my own company. And now my desk that I used to sit at is an exhibit at the California Science Center, and uh, as well as the desk of the the 12 other people that helped me launch the space shuttle main engine. And today, That's so cool. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. And and so today, um, I am not. Uh, I'm not working for any aerospace company per se, but rather I am teaching people how to become rocket scientists through my own company and partnering with uh, different news programs like CBS2 News in Los Angeles, where I share the technology and the science for launching SpaceX um, NASA uh, vehicles into space. Mm -hmm. And I also partner with uh, TV shows and TV producers to educate information uh, on TV. And so I work with uh, innovative artists who, Babette Perry over at Innovative Artists, who they get me out there for different TV hosting, uh, yeah. different educational programs. So I educate people on how to go into the STEM uh, fields with just science, technology, engineering, and mathematics through news, through TV shows through um, educational universities. And, and I do a, every time I uh, launch a book, I do a distinguished lecture series at California State University, Northridge in the alumni uh, uh, section. And so it's broadcast, it, this year is actually gonna be broadcast virtually. And so I, I partner with um, universities and producers and news programs to to share how science works so we'll have a a larger number than one in 31,000 yes <laughs> and that's important and side note my mom and my sister are both alumni from CSUN <laughs> yeah alumni yes they're both educators so my mom's retired now but my, my sister's still a, a educator she's a fourth grade teacher so I saw CSUN on your bio and I was like oh. yeah. Well, tell them hello and thank Absolutely. you for being alumni. California State University Northridge is probably one of the best campuses in the entire United States. People don't it's know that, great, especially for engineering and yeah. mathematics. It yeah. is one of the highest ranking, highest ranking universities that affordable universities that you could possibly go to when it deals with sciences. So I'm That's I'm honored amazing. to be an alumni. Oh, good, good. I could have used your book, you know, growing up because I definitely was not a fan of math. And my original dream was to be a doctor. And, oh. um, but I mean, I eventually discovered like I'm a singer and I'm a full-time musician. So that's what my path ended up being. And I think that's where, you know, God wanted me to be, but um, I could have used your book for sure because I was definitely afraid of math. And I think, you know, when you take that path and you take the goal of wanting to help people overcome their fears. I love that you're paying it forward in that way. I think that it is so beautiful. I think you're using what you've gone through. You're using your own career trajectory to convince other people and inspire other people and say, Hey, it's really not scary. You can do this too. And we need more of that because I think we probably, like you said, you don't, you don't want that statistic to be one in 31,000 anymore. So when you have the opportunity to, to influence others in that way, 
you have to do it. So I'm very, very grateful that you're using your experience to inspire other people and get them to go into this field. Because I would love to see more women and people of color in STEM fields. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Do you know what? Uh, thank you. Do you know who? Uh, it's, uh, there's. I, I really enjoy seeing people of color on TV with education. Uh, the person that really was inspiring for me is uh, Lamar Burton. You saw yes. him on Reading Rainbow. Yes. <laughs> There's a campaign to get him to be the new Jeopardy host now, which I, I think I, would be amazing. I think he would be amazing. I think I would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Start your campaign now. <laughs> so I, I really, I value when we have diversity on television yes. and we have diversity with education and mm -hmm. because anyone, it can be a, 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 person of color it can be a woman it can be a man it, it can be anyone who mm -hmm. can do well in science and and yeah. so that's what i love i love sharing yeah i think that's great so when people read your book what is one of the main things that you want them to once they close that last page what's one of the main things you want them to take away oh the main thing i want them to take away is if i could do this so can they Mm. whatever it is that they want to do. Mm. Uh, I, I truly believe that you must be the change you wish to see in the world first. You can't tell anyone else to do something that you haven't done. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I've, I've always just in my head just thought, okay, I'm going to do this. I don't care how hard it's going to be. If I have it in my head, if, if I graduated from California State University, Northridge in math, I can do anything. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I am going to write a book. I, I don't know how to do a book. I'm going to learn. I, I'm going to start t TV hosting programs. I don't know anything about it. I'm going to learn. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's like, I'm going to start being, sharing information online. I don't know how anything about it. I'm going to contact uh, someone and learn how to do it. And, and I am very honored because Ariana Huffington is the person that gave me my first opportunity with, uh, with, uh, journalism. Mm. Uh, I was appearing on a show with her, uh, on PBS and, uh, we were both guests at the time and that's how they had the opportunity to meet Ariana Huffington. I actually stayed, she was actually supposed to be a guest right after me. And she was supposed to come in two hours later. And my just, my spirit told me just to wait for her. I've always been a fan of her business mind and her yeah, strategy. Yeah. Yeah. And I just waited for her. And I remember just all I wanted was a photo with her because I was just so happy that she was going to be on the show and I got a chance to meet her because I, I'm, I'm blown away by her business mind. And so I remember just waiting there and uh, she eventually came and I said, I was just waiting to take a photo with you. I know I probably seem like this strange stalker. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? I love when you get to a certain point in your career where you're still kind of like a fangirl for certain people, even though you've accomplished so much. Like you're like, oh my gosh, I think that is adorable because it just it just humanizes it you. Like, I love that. It was such an honor to meet her, and as soon as it was like we became mutual fans, and and then she says, "Will you write for the Huffington Post?" She found out from the host at the time, it was Barry uh, Kipper, who had us on Between the Lines, and that was for my first book, Bathophobia. And uh, she asked me to to write on the Huffington Post as a, a blogger. And I said, yes, I jumped at the opportunity and I learned about how to write journalism and how to, to uh, make sure to make information solid and credible and, and newsworthy and, and touching at the same mm -hmm. time, because that that's like her brand. It's like how to touch people. So you change. And, and so yeah. she started her thrive global brand. And then later on, I started my answers on leash brand and and I really thank her. And now I write for Thrive Global and, and still on her platform. And I just really, just really thank her. And I'm a true believer that women need to support women when yeah. they're going through uh, their career development. And mm -hmm. I am very thankful for, for her help. Mm -hmm. And a and shout out to Ariana Huffington and, and her platform and everything, because I'm, I'm just very honored to receive help from great people. That's wonderful. Are there any other women specifically that you've come across in your career that have really helped pave the way for what you do? Yes. Um, they're deceased though. Uh, Catherine Johnson uh, oh, Lisa yeah, of course. and Mary Jackson, they were the women of color who did mathematics, exactly the same thing I did. Yeah. 
but they were in there 30 years before I was there. <clears throat> and I just still get choked up <clears throat> every time I think about their story because I, I had the exact same story, mm -hmm. but it was 30 years later and not much had changed. And when I saw their story, I started crying. I started literally crying when I saw the movie because I realized this is my life, but yeah. 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> I realized, well, and I realized that the movie was made about them and they had an opportunity to, to help people with the movie. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm younger. I, and at the time, I think it was like in my, the movie came out, I think in 2017. And I just thought, well, I've got, I've, I've got to carry on this legacy. And then, mm -hmm. uh, right before the pandemic started, uh, Catherine Johnson, uh, passed away. Mm, yeah. And, yeah. And her spirit probably knew that it was time. And, uh, and I just decided at that moment, I'm going to be the person to carry this torch, which yeah. is to help people understand the science and mathematics and, and inspire everyone to go into these fields because we launch great stuff. A lot of people right. don't know that in the 1990s, when I worked for, uh, the, uh, worked for launching these NASA rockets, mm -hmm we were launching the satellites that we're using right now on, on the zoom and the Skype and like, uh, all these platforms that Microsoft teams and everything yeah. else that's out there. It's all from what we launched in the 1990s. Mm. How we got on Mars is from the technology that we built with the Atlas engines in the two thousands, like the 2011, well, actually a little bit before that 2000 in the two uh, thousands. Mm -hmm. So this technology has to be built today in order for us to actually have the technology we need tomorrow. There's right. needs to be people right now generating the ideas for what we're going to use 20 years from now. Mm. And if we don't have the people to do that, we will be falling behind, not only as a nation, but falling behind with innovation for when we have climate change issues, when we right. have right. Uh, launch issues when we need to make sure and keep satellites from from falling back into the earth and, and damaging the earth. I mean, these things in which there's the next generation is going to do. And mm -hmm. our job, I look at it as my job specifically, is to contribute to this worldwide phenomenon on right. inspiring the next people who actually will solve climate change issues, which uh, people who will change systems. So it'll be fair for more people. So the, the people who will get in there and actually uh, create the, the next artificial intelligence. So mm -hmm. it can be non-biased. So your facial recognition could, could be, uh, uh, purposeful and healthy when it comes to help identifying ways to be able to help people. So these are the, the opportunities that we have in front of us. Yeah. Do you think that we will ever get to the point where we're not still having firsts in terms of diversity when it comes to the science field? And first, I mean, like first woman, first, you know, first Asian woman, first black woman, da, da, da. you think we will get to the point where we're not having first anymore. And it's just, we're in there and it's a diverse, inclusive field. Yes. Uh, the reason why I say that, because right now on the entire world population, I think women are uh, higher in percentage is not a 50, 50 split. It's mm -hmm. like more women uh, across the earth. And I truly believe women are inclusive by nature. Mm -hmm. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they know how to solve problems. They know how to look at systems and how they interact and they know how to communicate well. Yeah. And I truly believe that it's the women who are going to bring this whole world together. Who run the world? <laughs> <laughs> women, yeah. women, women. And, men, and men who love women. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, Olympia, tell us where we can find your books, where we can follow you on social media. And if there's anything that you have coming up that we can support, please let let my listeners know. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, the great news is that you can find my books on answersunleashed.com slash books. You can find out all three of my book series so far, three books of the book series. And also on April 28th, uh, there is going to be a talk over a virtual talk at California State University Northridge held by the Alumni Association, but it is for all university students as well as alumni, as well as 
anyone and everyone who wants to check out the talk online. And in the talk, I'm going to be speaking about the breakthrough science that I uh, present in my third book, uh, Answers Unleashed to the Science of Attracting What You Want. And that, uh, that breakthrough science is called quantum deciding. And so I'm going to be breaking down all of that science that relates to uh, everything from Einstein's um, entanglement theories to NASA's long distance teleportation and how it relates to you with being able to move forward and look at yourself in the future and actually start mapping out the plan on how to get to the future that you want. I love that. Thank you. You are so inspiring. And I know that there are going to be little girls that are going to be looking up to you uh, and wanting to get involved in STEM and the science field. So it's very important what you're doing and what you represent. So so thank you so much. And to the listeners, make sure you follow and go pick up all of her books and make sure you subscribe to We Need to Talk. We'll talk to you again next week. Bye. <laughs>